everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are starting to haul out the rest of the corn in the bins. So, we're gonna be starting today off with heading out to Warren, Illinois. We've got 5,500 bu bushels worth that I need to take out there, and the rest is probably gonna go to Dubuque. Uh, have yet to be decided. Um, kinda depends on what basis price is doing, but we've already locked in basis for Warren. And uh, yeah, so we've got about 25,000 bushels worth of corn. Um, which equates to about 25 loads, uh, depending on where I'm hauling it. Uh, how many I can take out a day can vary. I'm waiting for the truck to warm up right now. We just got enough air in here to move it. I untarped it. We're gonna pull ahead and take a load out of the Sioux bin. The Sioux bin unloads much, much slower than the Sioux cup, uh, even though it has larger augers. Uh, don't ask me why. Seems like the Sioux cup just is all around a better bin. Um, we all agree so just because for, well for that one fact right there but uh, yeah we're gonna be hauling out of this one because I've got plenty of time today's a rainy crappy day we're looking down the barrel of planting we just got like four or five inches of snow yesterday and it's all melted so it's a nice soupy mess out there um, but if we get some sunshine I think that the ground will really dry up fast if we have warm temperatures so let's go ahead and start loading into the truck This line is longer than I have ever seen it. It's like halfway out to the road. Wow. Apparently one of the people who runs the scale isn't here yet. This is loads for Kister Farms, LLC. Yes, sir. Corn, thank you. You guys got my weight? Uh, no, give it one minute here. Okay. I always feel so bad coming to Warren because they open the traps for you and my traps aren't easy at all. Well, the moisture is just right at 15%. I can be loading these a little heavier. I got about 77,000, just over 77,000 pounds this load but I always err on the side of caution when it comes to hauling the first load anywhere just so I can start getting the feel again for how the truck needs to be loaded welcome to Gratiot Wisconsin world's shortest main street No comment. I forgot to plug it in last night and we got a bunch of snow, so it's pretty cold out. Here goes a true cold start. She's usually pretty reliable when it comes to starting in cold weather, unless it's below zero, then we start to have issues.
one is about 72 psi on the back and about 66 on the front so couldn't really get this one loaded right it seemed like it seemed like i put all the corn in the front and hardly anything in the back and all the weight's still on the back but we're about to take another load down Let's see what this one weighs 79,420 pounds wow we came within how many pounds of that the last load uh, 16.21 Within 60 pounds of the last load cool. I like when Cody runs the scale because you don't got to call him in tell him who you are To this guy he gave me a slide the first time I came through here overloaded. Just gave, gave me a warning. Anxiety. At this point, I'm so used to letting off the throttle whenever I see a cop, I could be walking down the street and trip over my feet because I lifted up my right foot at the wrong time. We've got a problem. My guess is it's leaking around the water pump. So the alternator runs off the water pump, which is right there. I can't see exactly where, because it's inside the frame. It falls beyond my uh, tolerable fluid leakage range. So I might have to run this down to truck country and have them look at it and decide how much it's gonna cost me. But that's, that's definitely way more than what I can let fall out because that's just going to keep getting worse. I, it's always had a slow leak of fluid, but that is beyond excessive because it's been sitting there for less than five minutes and we already got a puddle forming. I'm thinking I'm going to run this load that I've got on down and uh, unhook the truck and take it down to truck country. Since this morning, which we've only taken two loads down, I've lost three quarters of a gallon. Oh, cool. That's way too much. Brought the truck down to truck country. They're going to have a look at this afternoon, hopefully. And today's the start of the weekend, so they won't be able to work on it until Monday. But they're going to see if they can't figure out what is going on with it this afternoon yet. Well, it's been just under two weeks, and I'm finally bringing the truck back home. Now let's have a quick little peek at what it cost me. So there's four pages worth of stuff on here, but uh, the big thing that was wrong with it was that the water pump needed it to be replaced. Uh, it was shot. So I got a new water pump on there. That was 480 bucks. And they had to go through and put new seals in a couple places. Um, hose clamps were loose in the back end of the motor. Um, so apparently now it shouldn't be leaking any coolant at all, which I really hope it is because, or isn't leaking, because um, I had, you know, I, I did go through coolant quite a bit. Um, not enough to warrant a trip down there, but it'll be nice having it all sealed up and everything. So... The total cost to me with labor and uh, parts was 
$264.16. And that's $1,068 in parts, $1,657 in labor, and $83 miscellaneous. I also had them, I have another thing on there from when they looked at the hose clamp on the back of the motor too that um, was leaking. And that was another $123. Bucks. But hopefully that solves the coolant leaking issue. You never really want to take it in to get it worked on, but the times that you do, you hope that they figured out everything that was wrong with it because it's been leaking ever since I bought the truck. Um, but, you know, I was able to keep cooling in there. It's not like it was losing so much where it's like, oh my gosh, I got to get this fixed right now until the water pump went out. And you could look under there and you could see it dribbling out of the motor. So um, that's good. Now I just got to get the rest of this corn hauled. Next load's coming out of that souk up for sure. Load faster and I don't have to deal with the wind. It's a little rainy today. Coming with me today? Remember folks, lift with your back in a yanking, jerking, twisting motion. Oh! I'm a farmer, I did lift. You guys see that? Don't ever build Sue. Only soak up, ladies and gentlemen. So you gotta, you gotta tell us what's your big rig handle, buddy. I haven't come up with one yet. Oh, there's a, there's something for the, for the channel. Come up with a handle. Yeah. Big red one. Okay, we'll tie that when we get done. Up where it will, yeah. We won't do it for right now, just in case. Just in case what we have to take back <laughs> take off. Face it burns. <laughs> I just serviced the truck and I'm not totally sure when I'm going to be able to start hauling corn again because pretty much everywhere is full. Uh, it's more of a logistics problem of getting the corn where it needs to go than it is a demand for corn. But uh, in the meantime, we went through and put a new CB radio in the truck, which I'm looking forward to using because I had a radio in here and it quit working. I don't know if it shorted out or what. But I really enjoyed, you know, talking to other truckers over the radio whenever you're sitting down at the elevator for extended periods of time. Uh, it's a lot of fun listening in, hearing what's going on. Um, if I can, I'm going to see if I can't find some of the channels that I was listening into last night. But we got a new four foot, no, three foot antenna over on the other side of the truck. This one is black. The last one was white and I think it was like a foot shorter. But uh, I went through and tuned the radio and everything, so it should be working. Um, now it's just a matter of finding someone who will talk back to me. Can I get a radio check? Thanks, sir. I might need to do just a little bit more tuning on the radio to get clearer reception, but it seems to be working. Um, glad that I can start talking to people again. Uh, when dad and I were testing it right after we put it in, I, uh, kept going radio check and it was like at 7:30 at night. So there were no trucks on the road and the ones that did go by, you couldn't see that they had a CB on them. Well, there was a white and yellow Peterbilt that came driving by and I'm like, white and yellow Peterbilt, can I get a radio check? And he's like, oh yeah, I can hear it loud and clear. And it was just kind of funny because it's like, I kept going, like I kept trying because I wasn't sure if it was working or not. And then I called him out, one of them out directly. And sure enough, I figured it was a Peterbilt. If it was a Peterbilt, I figured he's got to have a radio in it, right? Let's see what kind of things we can tune into on here. It's got 40 channels. Turn the RF gain all the way up. Yeah. 
I refer to Channel 8 as the Mexico Channel because it seems like everybody who's on there speaks Spanish. But that's enough tuning into that for today. If you listen to the ra CB radio for long enough, you'll hear some real weirdos on there. We're out in the middle of metaphorical nowhere, so it kind of surprises me that we get much of anything over the CBs like this. I mean, it makes me wonder how far away some of these signals are coming from because it's hard to imagine that within... You know, they say that a four-foot whip has a range of five to seven miles. So I don't know if I'm getting, like, skips or what or where these signals are coming from. But it's, it's, it is interesting sitting and listening to all the things that are coming up over the CB. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be hauling corn yet again. But uh, I have 1,500 bushels, I estimate, of my own corn to go out which isn't contracted or anything. I'm thinking I'll probably end up running that over to Dyersville. They've only got a 12 cent basis compared to it's like 30 or 40 in Dubuque. So I'm willing to haul the corn the extra few miles to get a little bit better price out of it. It's worth it for me being that I can haul it myself. But uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.